Making indie games on your own is a very hard and challenging process, but being a solo developer is a little bit different to working in a big AAA game company, where you work on one game with hundreds of other developers from various departments. Oh my god, okay, it's happening! Stay Today I'll show you what a game designer's job in a big AAA game studio looks like. We'll go through a full process of creating a part of the big game as a game designer. Hi, my name is Rafał Bremski and I work as a game designer in a AAA game studio in Poland. In the last video I covered job responsibilities for the animation team and the art department. Today let's dive in into the design area. And here we immediately stumble upon a similar issue as we did with art teams. It is impossible to cover every single possible design department because it will vary from studio to studio. For example, if a given game dev company creates an open world RPG game, it will most likely have an RPG design team that will focus on the stats and number for the player's progression, as well as an open world design team. They dedicated solely to open world design for that game that will make sure that the game's world is filled with stuff to do and activities are evenly spread. And while some open world games like the Elden Ring for example will focus mainly on the static NPC's placement and other open world games like Red Dead Redemption or Assassin's Creed might have a dedicated design team for bringing their cities to life with crowd placement and various city activities like playing poker or drinking games with other vikings. But generally with the design area I'm talking about the developers that make the game be a game. Usually a designer will have to wear two hats during development. An implementation hat, that means he or she will have to implement scripts, use specialized technical tools or tweak database values for a given feature or mechanic, and a design hat, that means that he or she will have to brainstorm ideas, discuss stuff with other departments and designers, create design docs, etc. So if you think you'd be happy with coming up with ideas for mechanics and different game elements, and you'd also be happy with making your hands dirty with some high-level implementation stuff without diving into very technical aspects of the game's engine, this is probably a perfect fit for you. And right off the bat, let's start with my currently favorite design department, gameplay design. And I'm calling it my favorite because, well, I work as a gameplay designer in a AAA game company and I can actually fully recommend it, but it kinda depends on what kind of gamer you are. Do you care about the gameplay in video games? Do you ever get curious about stuff like how does the shooting work in this game? Did my bullet actually travel some distance after I shot it or did it reach my target immediately after being shot? What happens if I shoot this NPC? Why does the jump in this game feel so good? Maybe you tend to invent your own rules for sports or games ever since you were a little kid. Or maybe you even have some cool ideas for video games and gameplay mechanics on your own. If you answered yes to any of these questions, gameplay design might be a good fit for you. Just keep in mind that gameplay is something kinda different from narration, story or level design. Gameplay design is the one department that marries many different aspects of creating a video game. Stuff like animations, AI and NPCs, character movement, progression, statistics, combat, special abilities, riding a horse or driving a vehicle, and many many more. All of this stuff needs to be designed and implemented, and it's the gameplay design team's job to make it awesome and unique. To give you an example, let's say you have a game where your character named Hero has to fight off a scary monster named Monsty. This encounter was requested to you by the quest design team. They needed to happen at the end of an epic quest they created, and you have to design this boss fight as a gameplay designer. Well, in this case, you would probably start with brainstorming all of the ideas for Monsty's moves and attacks with other designers. And let's say you decided that, in the first phase of the boss fight, Monsty, being a scary scary monster, will use the powerful scream attack that deals tons of damage to hero, if the player didn't hide behind some cover during this attack. Covers here would be provided by the set of 4 big pillars that are placed in the encounter Room. If the player manages to hide behind a cover to avoid it, Hero will not take any damage, but the cover will get destroyed in the process. We also decided that in the first phase of this fight, Monsty is covered with hard scales which makes it so that Hero cannot deal any direct damage to it. But after the scream attack, Monsty gets tired and falls on the ground exposing his fluffy scaleless tummy. That's when the player can strike Monsty, dealing some damage with the advanced tummy hitting warfare strategy. After some time, Monsty gets back on his feet and attacks Hero, whose only hope now is to seek cover behind one of the pillars that isn't destroyed yet. After Monsty destroys all four pillars on the arena, 
a giant sculpture that was hurled by those pillars falls on the ground, destroying the floor on this level and changing the encounter location for phase 2 of the boss fight. After the fight, the player will be given an epic reward, a legendary bow that can shoot a grappling hook and allow hero to travel to new locations. You also added phase 2 and 3 to the boss fight, but to make it simpler, let's ignore that and focus only on phase 1. Having the design created, your job as a gameplay designer would now be to discuss every single dependency on various other teams that have to combine their efforts to create this boss fight. So you go to the art team and you request a concept design for Monsty, telling them that he is covered with scales, he can scream and has a fluffy but very much damageable tummy. Their job will be to give you a character model along with VFX for the scream attack. They straight up accept your request with just one change to the Monsty's design. They want it to be a female monster, so Monsty becomes Monstess. But that doesn't really change anything regarding gameplay, so you go to the animation team to discuss what is needed for the fight. You create a list of animations, which includes an animation for Monstess's movement, her scream attack, her fainting after the scream and the pose that she will take when she is in the fainted state, exposing her tummy. You also request support from the sound effects team that will provide all the sounds made by the monster during the fight, especially her scream attack. After that, you go to the engine team or gameplay code team to discuss stuff like AI behavior during the boss fight and destruction of the pillars on the level. Having that covered, you go to the level design guys and you tell them what is needed for the encounter room, an arena with four pillars that will uncover a second arena after being destroyed. And here you stumble upon an issue. They decided that they cannot fit a second arena in their budget, so the whole encounter has to happen only in the first arena. Then you adjust your design doc to everything you decided with other teams. Monsi is now monstrous and her destroying four pillars will still make the statue go down, but instead of breaking the floor and moving the phase 2 of the boss fight to second arena, it will crush on monsters, breaking her scales and making her vulnerable to attacks not only when she's fainted, but at all times. At phase 2 her behavior changes and she won't use her scream attack anymore, but to keep it a little bit simpler, let's ignore the rest of the fight and focus only on phase 1. Having your design doc corrected, you go to the game director to accept your design, so that every team that is involved can start working on it. Game director likes this design, but he recently played Mario Kart for the first time in his life and he loves the design of the banana peel and he really wants it in this fight. I wonder if your feelings on this matter are clear, Lord Vader. Your attempt to talk him out of it didn't really work, and he's basically your boss here, so you have to trust that his judgment will only benefit the game, and you adjust your design deck to have banana peels in the encounter. Player will be able to throw them at random places around the area, and if the monster walks on them, she will slip and fall, entering the fainted state, just like she does after the screen. You adjust your dependencies with the animation team, adding the animation for sleeping on banana peel, you also go to the art team to add the banana peel model to the list and you inform everyone that they can start working because the design for it is now closed and accepted. As the animation team delivers all the animations, art team delivers all the 3D models, level design team delivers a location on which the fight will happen, engine and code teams set up pillars destruction during the scream attack and sound effects team delivers all the sounds needed, your job is far from done. You finished the design part of it, but now the implementation part starts for you. And this means implementing AI behaviors of the monster using commands that were given to you by the code team, implementing scripts for monster to use her scream attack, taking damage from hero when in vulnerable state, and sleeping on the banana peel. You also make sure that all animations are set up correctly and all the VFX and sound effects are played at the right moment. Having all this working, you spend some time to tweak the values for the monster attack damage, the damage she takes from the player when in fainted state, the time she spends on the ground after sleeping on banana peel, or after fainting and all the scripts and behaviors related to switching to next phases of the boss fight. After that, you take all that you currently have and you give it to the QA department that will make sure it is working, it is stable and it is not crushing the game at end time. And obviously it does. So they send it back to you or code teams to fix bugs that they found. But after some iterations, the encounter is finally finished and the art team can make sure that it is looking good as well because so far you were working on an ugly non-textured version of the monster and the encounter area wasn't lit correctly. A couple of weeks after the game is released, you go to reddit and check if people like this boss fight or not. They did, and they mostly loved the banana pills idea for some reason. Everyone anonymously agreed that this was a brilliant idea, and from now on you remember to trust the game director more.
Mamma mia! So that's basically how a gameplay designer's job look like. You need to have strong design skills and a solid understanding of what works in games and why. This is the most important part of the designer's skill set, but you would also need to learn some technical stuff for implementation part, which isn't usually that crucial and can be learned along the way. Technical skills usually mean learning an internal scripting language or one that's used globally. Some studios use C Sharp here for example, but basic knowledge of C++ or other language that is used in the game engine would be a big plus here. And that's pretty much it for the gameplay designer's position. If you want to know more about the process of designing gameplay for AAA games, maybe you'd like to know how you can become a gameplay designer and apply for a job at a AAA game studio, or you'd like me to explain differences in gameplay design between various AAA companies, let me know down in the comments. In the next video, I'll cover another designer's department, the quest design team. And trust me, quest design is probably one of the most awesome thing there is, so make sure to subscribe not to miss it. And see you in that video. Bye!